Hi guys, good evening. I am your number online course from axi.com. I will let you know further about the biodiversity regarding the invertebrate group. So we already completed certain things related to invertebrate group, the biodiversity, some of the phyla coming in the category of invertebrate. I will proceed further with the third phyla, that is phylum area. Good evening. Good evening to everybody. Okay. So phylum area. So the formal name for this phylum is celebrate. And we have seen the protozoans. We have seen also the coriferans. Animals without tissue level of organization. But now this is the first group, the metazoans, the multicellular animals with the tissue level of organization. That is why the Nidarians are considered as the first true metazoans having tissue level of organization. The cells are organized to form tissues. And now, regarding the cell types, the nature of the body wall, we have seen already certain criteria for classification. And this group is normally diploblastic, having two layered body wall, having an outer ectoderm and an inner endoderm. So the reservoir diagonal group is called diploblastic. And between the two layers, there is no cellular layer, but we have a jelly-like layer is formed between the ectoderm and endoderm called mesoglia. The middle layer, non-cellular, without formation of any tissues, is called as a mesoglia. Hence, this group is called diploblastic group. And normally, almost all the animals are marine, excepting one animal. For example, hydra. So, Hydra is a freshwater animal. Hydra is a freshwater animal. Excluding Hydra, all other animals are not right. Then we are using the word sessile. Any attached form is called a sessile form. Are also called as secondary forms. The attached forms are also called as secondary. So, some of the nidarians are the cylindrates or sessile or secondary, while others are free soon. For example, those forms which are attached to the substratum or just like a cylinder, just like a cylinder or having a cylindrical body, and those which are having the ability of swimming, the free swimming forms, they are all umbrella like. They are all umbrella like. So, sessile attached, another word used for sessile, the secondary forms, and some of them are free swimming. The nature of the symmetry, the body can be cut into equal horse in any place. So we have radial symmetry. The animals are radial symmetry. But there is an exception. So everywhere you have always an exception. So in the case of one organism by name C and M O, it is an attached form, just normally called Adamsia. Adamsia, the name of the animal, the scientific name, Adamsia C and M O. The C and M O exhibits what is called by radial symmetry. So, all are marine except in Hydra. Likewise, all are having the radial symmetry except in the sea animal Adamsia. Where you have the body can be cut into tickle horse only at certain planes. In radial symmetry, the body can be cut into tickle horse in any plane. In bilateral symmetry, the body can be cut into tickle horse in only one plane. In the case of biradial symmetry, the body can be cut into tickle horse in more than one plane, but the plane of division is restricted. That is why we have called this one as by radial symmetry. That is seen in the case of Sea Animal and Amsia. Now, so why is the name of Cylindrata? So formerly the phylum was called Cylindrata because of the presence of a central cavity. It is not a serum, but a central cavity is formed and that cavity is called gastrovascular cavity. So, this cavity is also called Cylindrina. Cylindrina. Hence the name Cylindrata. Hence the name Cylindrata, the former name, not the present. We have a different name. So, they have a central gastrovascular cavity. So, as this cavity performs the function of circulatory system vascular and also function of stomach, it is called gastrovascular cavity or Cylindrina. As it is behaved like a body cavity, hence called silo, the word engineer refers to the digestive tract. So a cavity is formed which is acting as a body cavity 
which is also acting as a stomach, which is also acting as a circulatory system, hence the name gastrovascular cavity as a And normally in these animals, we don't have two openings. Any animal, generally, the highly developed animals, they have two openings. One is a mouth, another one is an anus. But in this case, in these animals, you have only one opening, namely the mouth, a single opening. There is no anus. So if you have this opening, it is being placed at the distal end, at the free end. Suppose for example, if you are taking hydra, the cylindrical shaped body, there is a conical elevation in the case of hydra or any other cylindric animal. This conical elevation is called what is known as hypostome. This is what is called the hypostome. So we have a single opening, what is called mouth. The mouth is always placed on a conical elevation. The conical elevation is called hypostome. Now, this is the name why it is given cylindrate. If we are using the word nowadays, you know that one nidaria, the new name has been given to this phylum, nidaria. The reason for that one, the animals are provided with the stinging cells. The stinging cells, an organ of affects, an organ of attachment, an organ used for capturing the prey also. So that one is called the nidoblast. The stinging cells called nidoblast. That is why the name is given for this phylum, the new name nidaria. Presents or possession of the nidoblast or stinging cells. These nidoblasts also cause nidocytes. So these nidocytes normally having uh, what is called a poison filled stinging capsule. A poison filled stinging capsule. That capsule is called the nematocyst. So the nematocyst what we use normally for stinging cells is not an entire cell. The word nematocyst refers to only the capsule, a bag like structure filled with the poison. Suppose for example the tikima, this is what is called the cell having some sort of a tentacle like structure, a filament, a needle like structure. So it is nothing but a single cell enclosing a fluid filled bag. Now this is a cell having the nucleus, the cytoplasm, etc. Now this fluid filled bag is called what is known as a nematocyst. So the nematocyst is not an entire cell, it is only a part of the cell. The cell is called as a nidoplast or the nidocytes. And because of the possession of such stinging cells, the phylum is now renamed as Nidaria instead of Cylindrata. Okay, so though, though they have the Cylindra, now this is the main feature, that is why the animal group is named as Nidaria. So once again I want to tell you, the nematocyst is not the entire cell, it is only a part of the cell. The entire cell is called the endoblast and the endocytes. Now this is a capsule or a bag or a vesicle filled with poison. So normally in the case of cylindrates, these stinging cells are used as an organ of affects for attachment and also for capturing the prey. So the main function is only for capturing the prey and further the animal is injecting the poison and that poison is used not for killing the prey but mainly for killing, mainly for killing, so not for killing the prey mainly for paralyzing the prey. So once the prey to be captured, that prey is normally being injected with the poison or the toxin and normally that is used for paralyzing the prey, not for killing the prey. Hence the toxin used by the animal for just paralyzing the prey is called hypnotoxin. 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 Hypn Hypnotism. You hear the word hypnotism, slight voice. This is what is hypnotoxin. A toxin or a poison that is being injected into the body of the prey to paralyze the prey. And that one is not for killing the prey, but only for paralyzing the prey. So the names of the names of the phylum, they have different names according to the position of certain characteristics. Now, actually I mentioned all that the native plus are used for attachment, anchorage, defense and also for the capture of the prey. So mainly for capture of the prey, for paralyzing the prey, not for killing the prey. Now, a peculiar condition normally. So in the case of animals, I mentioned already we have only one opening. And now there is a cavity, suppose I am taking the hydra as symbol structure. Now this is a cavity, 
the gastrovascular cavity. Though the gastrovascular cavity is formed, you see that one the cavity is lined with endodermal cells. Endodermal cells. Though the animal is multicellular, though the animal is having more, a peculiar type of digestion is seen in these groups. An animal having both extracellular and intracellular digestion. So the cells are capturing the food particles and digesting them, mainly the endodermal cells. At the same time, some of the food particles also digested outside the cell, then it is being absorbed. So, some food particles are taken up inside the cell and they are digested and some of the food particles are being digested normally in the gastrovascular cavity by releasing the enzymes by the secretory cells and after digestion gets over and these food particles are being taken in. So, that is why I say in this category, in this group, we have both extracellular and intracellular digestion. For example, in human beings, we have only extracellular digestion. Though we have the digestion occurs inside the lumen of the intestine. The lumen of the intestine is not a cell. It is nothing but a cavity outside the cell. Here the enzymes are poured or released and the breakdown of the particles taking place in the lumen of the intestine and the broken particles are absorbed into the intestine. And that type of digestion taking place outside the cell is called extracellular. If any digestion takes place within the cell, as in the case of amoeba, that is called intracellular. So here we have both extracellular and intracellular, a peculiar condition, though the animal is having multicellular structure. Now, the Nidarians normally, if you are taking the cell base, there are two different forms. Some of the forms I mentioned already attach cessile, and some others are free soon. So normally, the attached forms are cylindrical, attached to the substrate by means of pedal. This is the same example of Hydra or CNMO. So, such cylindrical shaped forms, which are normally sessile and attached to the substrate, are called the polyforms. Poly, the cylindrical shaped structures, which are normally sessile and cylindrical, attached to the substrate, are called the polyforms. It's an example of Hydra. C animal by name and amsia. So these are all the attached forms. These attached forms of cylindrics are called the polyps. So in contrast to the polyforms, we have certain structures which are looking like an umbrella, which are looking like an umbrella, which are looking like an umbrella, for example, like this. This is umbrella shaped structure, but a free swimming form, a free swimming form. And such a free swimming form, which is umbrella shape and just angle cable of swimming without any attachment, are called the medusa forms. So, polyforms, the attached forms, the medusa forms, free swimming forms floating on the surface of the body. And one actually just what is called is medusa, medusa form of an animal, which is highly poisonous. What is called the sea bass. Sea bass. One organism by the name Chironix. Chironix. So it is a medusa form, it is commonly called the sea bass, having poison. That poison is the ability of killing many animals at a time. So it is nothing but a medusa form. One example which is highly poisonous. So Aralia, the jellyfish, is an example for the medusa form. So which one of the following is not actually an animal? Not a true fish, but having the name of fish. So this is one such example. We have silver fish also, the devil fish also, cuttlefish fish also. These are all having the names of fish, but they are all not considered as a true fishes. See an example Aridia. It's commonly called as a jellyfish, but it is not a true fish. It is a silver grape. Now in some cases, so these animals are either in polyform or in medusop. But in some cases, in some cases, we have both poly and medicinal forms. So we have in one generation polyform. This polyform produces medusa. A generation. And this medusa produces poly. So the polyform normally reproduces asexually. It reproduces asexually. 
to form the metasol form in some organisms. And this metasol reproduces sexually to form the polyp form. This is the arrangement what we have. So we have in one generation the polyp form, in another generation we have the metasol form. And this phenomenon, you know that one as in the case of plants, the gametophytic generation alternates with the sporophytic generation. Here the polyform in one generation alternates with medicine form in another generation. And this phenomenon is called alternation of generation. But we have a technical word for this one also. So the phenomenon of alternation of generation in cylindrates is also called metagenesis. 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 The process of alternation of generation in cylindrics is called metagenesis. The word has been given for this phenomenon as in the case of, for example, the sporophytic generation alternates with the gametophytic generation in the case of plants. But the name is given only for here. Polyp alternates with metasophone and that phenomenon is called metagenesis. So it is observed in the case of uh, one organism by name of Bavia, a cylindric, commonly called a sefer, commonly called a sefer, the nickname. Just like for jellyfish, for Aurelia, and sea anyone for Adansia, and Pavilia, we have the sea fur. So, in the case of Pavilia, there is an alternation of generation, and that phenomenon is called metagenesis. See, in some there is an alternation of generation, that is what is called metagenesis. So, poly produces medusae asexually, and the medusae form the polysexually. For example, Abelia Sefer. Now, so this is the first group they have developed the nerve cells. This is the first group they have developed the nerve cells. But the nerve cells, they don't have any sensory cells. In some cases, what we have sensory organs. In the case of of home, for balancing, call us a stratocyst. Stratocyst. But generally speaking, in the case of cellulites, there are no sensory cells. We have only the nerve cells. So we have the nerve cells, you know, the one polarized nerve cell. So what is a polarized nerve cell? A polarized nerve cell has, you know, that one, a cell body, axon, and then many dendrons. This is what is called a polarized nerve cell. A polarized nerve cell has cyton, many dendrons, and then an axon. But here in the case of cylindrates, the nerve cells are normally, see that one, non-polarized. <coughs> non-polarized. So the cells are like this, more or less in the form of a triangle. So they do not have any axon and dendrons. Such a nerve cell without any axon and dendrons are considered as a non-polarized. But there is no true nervous system. These non-polarized nerve cells are interconnected to form what is called a nerve net. So, and this is also one of the questions came in the AIMS question paper regarding at the nerve net. So in the case of Hydra or in the case of any cylinders, we have only that is nerve net and the nerve cells are non-polarized. So they are interconnected like this. So like this they are interconnected. This is the one what we have in the case of cylinders forming a nerve net there is no complete nervous system, there is no brain at all. Non-polarized and also the nerve net is present without any sensory cells. There. So the animals reproduce both sexual and asexual. Because almost all the animals are hermaphrodites, having both male and female sex organs. But they also reproduce asexual. Asexual reproduction, the most common method of reproduction in the case of cylinders by being process. Budding process. Mostly the bird is developed exogenously. So we have two types of bird. If any bird is formed inside, then it's called endogenous bird. Endogenous. But in the case of Hydra, you could see the bird is developed outside the body, hence called exogenous bird. So the development of bird outside the body, and that is called exogenous bird. So the most common method of reproduction in the case of Hydra during for example, when food is plenty, particularly at the time of summer, the hydra reproduces asexually by budding when there is plenty of food available. And that bud is exogenous in nature. 
And sexual reproduction is by means of singa. There is nothing but the union of the gametes. You know the singa with the goat is used for fertilization process. The technical goat used for fertilization is called singa, union of gametes. So the process of union of gametes is otherwise called syngamy or fertilization. So both the events taking place in the case of celebrates either by means of budding process named with the asexual method or by means of syngamy named with the sexual method. So in some cases the development is invalid. In some cases the development is direct. So in most cases normally we call the development is indirect. So when I am using the word indirect development, the meaning for that one if there is any lawable stage during the development of an individual, then that development is called indirect development. Say an example of frog. So in the case of frog, there is a larval stage named the tadpole larva. So the tadpole larva doesn't like, doesn't looking like what is called as adult. It, it is undergoing a number of changes, a series of changes, and finally converted to adult. So if there is was a difference between the juvenile form, the young form, and the adult, then we have to go through a series of changes and such changes will be the call, you know, that one metamorphosis. So, if there is any larval stage, if the larva is undergoing metamorphosis to form the adult, that type of development is called indirect development, say an example, the tadpole larva of frog or caterpillar larva of a butterfly. And so there is a larval stage. There are two types of larva you can see. One type of larva, Ephyra, and another one, larva, larva. For example, the case of deadly fishes, we have Ephyra larva. In some cases, just like Odilia, we have the Planula larva. So, anyway, the larval forms also another question related to the lens point of view. So, the larval forms of Ephyra and the Planula. These are all the two types of larval forms as the development is indirect. Now, <coughs> we have so many examples under this category. There is one form of an animal which exhibits what is called polymorphism. You know the meaning of polymorphism? A single organism is being represented by more than one form. So, I mentioned already an organism with actually endogenous, but for example, we have sponges. So, in the case of sponges, actually the bird is formed internally. Such endogenous birds which are formed internally are simply called as gemmules, the internal birds. There is another name for the endogenous birds. Normally, you can see in the case of sponges, sponges they produce birds inside the body. Such birds are called endogenous birds, also called as gemmules. Now, coming back to this, exhibit actually the Pisani. So, there is one type of virus cylindry which exhibits, which exhibits polymorphism. Here, what is the meaning of polymorphism? A single organism being represented by more than one form. See, in the case of Pisaria, the person came in the question paper in such a manner, they have not given the word polymorphism, they have given what is called tetramorphic form. The example for tetramorphic form, Pisaria, Tetramorphic. If any organism is being represented by more than one form, then we can say polymorphic organism. And here, this Pisalia represents or exhibits actually occurs in more than one form, that is, there is in four forms having different structures for different functions. And that is why it is called as tetramorphic form. The question was given, the question paper. So, Pisalia exhibits polymorphism. There is also a nickname for this one, Portuguese man of war. So it has many structures just like a knight, a king or a soldier to attack the enemy. The name is given Portuguese man of war, for this Pisani, the nickname. And likewise also we have a number of organisms under this phylum having nicknames. For example, Gorgonia, sea fan. It is looking like a, just the manual fan, what we are using just for just aeration. Another one looking like a pen, C pen, penetula, C pen. And also, we have a number of coral forms. The corals are belonging to this fine. So, an organism doesn't look like an organism at all. Having calcareous skeleton, calcareous spicules, the structure actually looking like a solid body consisting of a made up of calcium carbonate. 
and that what is called as a coral animal. So the coral animal is normally is of economic importance. We have different types of coral. So coral belongs to the group Cilandrata. There are two one class by name. That is what is called Anthozoa. They belong to the class Anthozoa. So there are different forms of coral. Some corals are looking like a bright. For example, in Rhina, it's called as the bright coral. And the most precious one, you know, that one used in ornaments, ornamental coral, a red coral, Corallium rubra. The species name, Corallium rubra. Corallium rubra, this is normally called as a red coral. It is the most precious one, you know, that one. It's also of an ornamental value. And some other corals we have. For example, tubifora. Now, this organ pipe is looking like an organ pipe, and this coral being utilized in indigenous system of medicine. So, in Ayurvedic medicine, they are using this one tubifora, an economic value that is indigenous system of medicine. In our Indian system of medicine, they are using this tubifora, and that is a medicine. And fungia, it is looking like a fungus form, looking like a mushroom. That is why the coral is called mushroom coral. So, actually, these animals secrete calcareous exoskeleton. All these corals secrete the calcareous exoskeleton and form what we call this one, the coral reefs. So, some coral reefs are much longer. So, you see that one, one such coral reef, which is the longest one, more than 1,200 kilometers, that is what is called the Great Barrier Reef of Australia. It's the longest coral reef in the world. That is why we have actually the water speed, the tidal waves, the wave speed, the velocity of waves normally very slow in the case of Australia. This is because of the Great Wall, like the Great Wall of China, just actually formed inside the sea. And that one is nothing but the coral reef, the longest one, the Great Barrier Reef of Australia. So these are all some of the things related to these forms. Here given the just activate the anatomy or the external morphological characteristics of two different structures. Now, this is the polyform, and this is the polyform, an example for polyform a sea animal. So, its cavity that is, this is the gastrovascular cavity, and these are all what are called the tentacles. There is one question related to the nematocyst. So, in the case of Hydra, we have the nematocyst form abundant in the tentacles. More more just the cells actually more nanoblasts or the stinging cells are formed in the tentacles. Now in the case of this is one just an example for a radia jellyfish we have the arrangement so this is umbrella like the medicine of form. So in some cases both forms are formed in some cases we have just only or either polyform or the medicine of form. So the sea anemone is the best example for biradial symmetry hydra is an example for a freshwater animal. It is also called as water serpent. Hydra is also called as water serpent. S T R P E N T. Just like a snake, it is the ability of just injecting the poison and making the animals to be paralyzed. It is also called as water serpent. So we have sea pen, then just a sea fan, and also sea fur, then actually sea anemone, the jellyfishes, etc., all coming under this category, along with the corals, for an economic value animal. That is also included under the final cylindrator and the data.